Welcome to Content with Character, the weekly podcast that'll give you the momentum you need to create content with more ease, clarity, and laughter. I'm your host, content copywriter Emily Aborn, and I'm all about unconventional marketing approaches. I believe in your big ideas, and I'm excited to help you share them in a way that's distinctly you. Repurposing is for you. It does save you time. It does help make one single piece of content go further and faster for you. And it's also for others. It helps you impact and reach more people in multiple ways. Today, the goal is to show you how to repurpose audio and video content, workshops, courses, webinars, and even conversations and calls for yourself as well as those who you want to impact. Welcome back to the Content with Character podcast. Okay, big celebration today. Then I promise we'll put down the confetti for a little while, but this is a huge one, I gotta say. Uh, As aforementioned in previous episodes, if you are listening to this in May, it is birthday month on the Content with Character podcast. And furthermore, if you're listening to this in 2024, it's the first birthday of the Content with Character podcast. And even further, further, furthermore, if you're listening on May 14th, it's a year plus one day of the Content with Character podcast. Content with Character and I actually just so happen to share a birthday of May 13th. It's really quite exciting and magical. Couldn't have planned it better myself. Oh, wait, I did plan it. I share about the Content with Character birthday for two reasons. No, wait. I lied. I have three reasons. Number one, we have to celebrate our wins. Milestones, large, small, celebrate them all. Cheer yourself on and high five. Personally, I keep a monthly celebrations list and I write the dumbest, smallest things on there so that at the end of the month, I can look back and be like, good job, Emily. Wow, you did read a great book this month. Or wow, I did have an amazing time connecting with my little brother in the sunshine. Or holy gee, I worked with incredible clients this month. Gotta celebrate all the moments, my friends. Got to celebrate all the moments. They are part of the journey. They're, in fact, one of the most important parts of the journey. Um, Okay, the second reason I wanted to share is, I don't know about you, but sometimes I have regrets. I have regrets that I did not start sooner. Uh, specifically around this podcast, I do have regrets that I didn't start with this podcast first or that I didn't start it sooner or that I'm behind. I have 200 odd episodes of my other podcast, She Built This, and I look back on it. I'm like, that is just 200 episodes of kind of experimenting. And now I only have 52 of these to show for. Uh, Sometimes I feel that way about lots of things in my career, lots of things in my life, which is another story for another day. But that why didn't I start sooner? Or why didn't I discover this sooner? Why didn't I learn this sooner? Those are like often questions that I personally face. And I wanted to share this as an encouragement to you because if you ever do that too, here's what I want to offer us. Maybe we can just turn that noise down. Like, stop it. Stop that. Stop it. (laughs) But no, really, let's focus on where we are now. Because you know what? Our journeys are our journeys. They're not anybody else's. And bully for them if they started a little bit sooner than we did. Today, we are here. You are here. X marks the spot. And you are going this way. And that is what matters right now. So let's turn down the volume of that noise a little bit and just be where we are. Um, And the last reason I wanted to share is because sometimes our goals and dreams feel really big and really huge and really daunting and feels like we're never going to get there. And a podcast, really anything that you commit to consistently, it's a great reminder that the actual only way to your goal, to your dream is just one foot in front of the other. Showing up week after week, day after day, whatever you commit to, uh, one day, one small step, one moment at a time after another. And I just think when I break, when I think about my big goals and my dreams like that, it really puts things in perspective. And again, reminds me to focus on right now, like just that one small step. So, okay, sappy, emotional, Emily time over. Let's get into the logistics and tangibles of repurposing audio, video, workshops, and more as 
promised. If you've been following along in this little three-part ultra, mini, tiny, very small series, uh, you may remember me sharing in the episode uh, recently about written content, about why we would bother repurposing in the first place. So I'm not going to repeat myself. Um, Lots of people think of repurposing as simply a time saver. They think that, well, if I just create one piece of content and then I repurpose it, it saves me time to turn it into more. And yes, that is a huge benefit. That is one of the many, many things that I absolutely love about repurposing. But especially as it relates to today's topics of audio, video, workshops, courses, etc. Uh, there's another major benefit as well. And that is, here's the benefit. Not everyone can and not everyone wants to consume things in audio, video, workshop, course, webinar form. Not everybody likes those formats. It's easy to think that because you enjoy podcasts, everybody enjoys podcasts. Or because you can watch endless hours of YouTube and TikTok, and reels, that's what everybody's into. But that is just not the case. Lots of people, let me just say this, lots of people in my life love reels. They love reels. They love sending me reels. I don't particularly enjoy reels, especially not lengthy ones. I don't really like video for the most part at all. Um, If I am watching video, I want it short and sweet. Oftentimes, I will actually put video content in my pocket and I will just listen to it and not watch. I'm actually very bad at retaining. If I'm just like sitting in front of something, watching a video about it, I'm not great at it, which means I'm bad at watching courses, watching replays, anything really that requires me to like sit still by myself and learn it. Like if it's not live, uh, I'm not really that great at doing at committing to, unless of course it's like reading, reading. I love learning through reading. So anyway, repurposing is for you for sure. It's very helpful to you. It saves you time. It helps you make one single piece of content instead of 50 different pieces of content. And you can help to make that go further, right? So it it actually is saving you like a lot of uh, mental energy as well as time. But it's also for you to impact and reach people in more ways. And that's really what I want to highlight in today's episode. The goal today is to really show you how to get started and do that for yourself as it relates to audio, video. And then I also want to talk about workshops, courses, webinars. We're going to kind of like lump all those into one. And I'm even going to talk about conversations and client calls as we wrap up, because I think that's a huge, uh, not often talked about bonus when it comes to repurposing. And don't worry, I'm not talking about like disclosing people's names and breaking confidentiality and stuff. So we'll get into that. Anyway, that's where we're headed. And just in case you are new here, if this is your first time listening, welcome to the Content with Character podcast. Sorry, I didn't greet you sooner. I was on a little bit of a roll, as you may have noticed. Uh, I'm Emily Aborn. I'm a content copywriter, I am a repurposing lover myself. I am a podcaster, a speaker, an auntie, a dog mom, a friend, a wife. You get the idea. A Jeopardy contestant for my couch. That's a fun fact. Anyway, I'm all the things. I'm all the things repurposed at different moments throughout my day, throughout my life. For work, for actual like money that I make, I write website copy, blogs, portfolio, and and project features and um, a lot of other marketing materials for small businesses. I love working with people locally. I love working with people in the home trades, also people with kind of like a health and wellness mindset. So if you ever want to learn more about me, all of my connection links are in the show notes, as well as very easily, you can just go to my website, emilyaborn.com. And like wherever you like to spend your time, except TikTok, (laughs) I uh, have the links to find me there. And if you really want to make my day, I mean, it is the day after my birthday. So I feel like you should probably be giving me a birthday present. Uh, If you really want to make my day, I would absolutely love for you to help me celebrate the podcast turning a year old. And how can you do that, you wonder? Well, let me tell you, you can share this episode or maybe another episode that you've enjoyed recently with a friend or maybe even two. Um, So you can help me spread the word and give somebody else a leg up maybe with their content marketing and visibility too. So it's like the gift that keeps on giving. It's a very nice birthday present indeed. I love to see people paying things forward. Okay, enough jibber jabber. 
We're going to start with audio, uh, which is exactly what I'm creating right here and right now. Forms of audio for you might be like um, a podcast episode, could be solo, could be interview. Maybe you do audio books, um, audio courses. I've seen, or well, I should say I've, I've heard people doing audio courses. So those are things that would just be like solely audio. And you can probably think of more if you are creating said other things. To get started repurposing audio, let's start with a podcast um, because I think it's the most probably commonly produced out of the people listening. So if you have a podcast, first of all, you're definitely going to want to get in on my friend Alicia Galati's new course that she just came out with on repurposing your content for in your podcast using AI tools. I went through the course and what I love is that Alicia gives like exact steps so you can walk through taking your podcast from that one audio piece of content into 11 other plus pieces of content. I'm not an affiliate. The link I'm sharing in the show notes is not an affiliate link. I'm just a huge, huge, I mean, I'm a big fan. I am an affiliate of Alicia's. She's super smart, comprehensive. And what I love is that she shares like kind of all the cautions and to do's and not to do's along the way. So I will include a link to that course in the show notes. Like I said, if you have a podcast, you may very well find yourself diving in and loving that. With audio, in the instance of podcasts and audio, it's important to remember that like, it's just not everyone's jam. You know, still in 2024, I have had people ask me, what is a podcast? How do I find a podcast in 2024? Now, me, I listen to like five, six podcasts a day. I cannot believe that somebody would not know what a podcast is and also not know how to find it. But that's just not the case for every single person. And it's also not accessible to everybody. So think about that. That's another really important thing to realize. If accessibility and inclusion are important to you, you're going to want to consider that as well. If you're doing something audio in your business and you want it to be shared and accessible to more people. So I'm going to do a couple ideas. I'm just going to give you three ideas on repurposing audio content. I think I'll try to keep it to three for each category unless something else magically pops into my mind. Idea number one for audio, uh, and this would help with that accessibility piece, is creating a transcript. Um, I like doing a blog from the transcript or an article. So oftentimes in my show notes, I will include extended show notes. And in those extended show notes, it's pretty much a lot of the episode in blog form. So I like it for a couple reasons. First, it gives that person that does like the reading and listening that um, that way to see the step by step written down. But second of all, if you can't listen at all, it's a great way to access the information. So a couple ways to do that. You can use um, Otter AI. That's a tool that I use. It, it Basically, I upload my audio into Otter AI and I download the transcript and I can use it as I please. If you are using, if you're like, I'm just going to turn this transcript into a blog, I will warn you, you do need to actually clean up that transcript a little bit. I think it's fine. Well, I think any way that you decide to, to share a transcript, whether it be here's a link to the transcript or here's a blog and you you base it off of the transcript, you're going to need to do a little bit of work, probably a lot of work to clean it up. Transcripts keep things in like our so's, our ums, our likes, you know, all kinds of, they get words wrong, they spell names wrong, so you do need to clean it up. But turning your audio episode, audio content, however that may be, into a blog or an article or um, just a readable transcript, I think that is a great way to go. Now, one thing I've been loving, and I do have to give major props to my friend, Alicia Galati, for suggesting this. I take my solo episodes for the Content with Character podcast, and I upload them into Otter AI to give me that transcript. And then I turn that into a uh, LinkedIn article. Now, when I'm doing my blogs to go with the the Content with Character podcast, I do not use the transcript. I just use my outline that I that I worked through in the episode. But when I am doing a LinkedIn article, 
I do use the transcript because I want the points to be more of like five things you need to think about in choosing a frequency versus a consistency. So it's like a little bit shorter and quippier. Um, so I do use the transcript in that case. Plus, sidebar, um, I'm actually going through past episodes of Content with Character podcast episodes. So I'm doing this like from episode one through where I'm at today. And since I'm backtracking, I don't remember what I talked about in that episode. So I get the transcript to help me out. Um, so that's a great idea. That's idea number one. Turn your episode, your audio content into a transcript, into a blog, or into an article. Idea number two is to break it down into mini pieces. So what this could like look like is um, social media. It could look like quotes. It could look like quotes from your actual episode. I mean, I'm not really renowned for my quotes, but if I were, I might want to include some zingers on my social media as like little quote graphics, right? Or I could share lessons that I share in the episode, like all three of those little kind of mini lessons I shared at the beginning of why I'm celebrating. Those are great lessons I could share on social media. Takeaways, bullet points, um, pretty much all of those bullet points that you, you might include in show notes those make fantastic social media pieces. Stories, um, backstories, like if there was some sort of backstory that prompted me to talk about this topic, stories within. If it's a guest situation, you probably have a little bit of a story of either how you met each other or maybe what drew you to them. So you may have a backstory with a guest. Um, and I like to think, you know, even before that episode airs, you kind of already have content for yourself. The other thing, if if there's a guesting situation, and let's say you're the guest, and this is a piece of audio you want to repurpose as the guest, I love taking the questions that you got asked in the episode and repurposing them into social media posts or blogs or just mini pieces, the questions that you got asked, and you can repurpose them. It's really awesome. And think about this, the questions that sometimes the questions a host asks are like so unique and fantastic. And you're like, oh my God, nobody has ever asked me that before. But a lot of times it's questions that you get asked often or that other people are wondering about you. So it's like really perfect to repurpose because you're answering a question that is burning on a lot of people's minds. And then the last one is, um, if you are like a more visually inclined person, you could have some serious fun creating visuals or graphics. Like I'm, I'm picturing like Venn diagrams or, you know, something like that, that goes along with the, the content in that audio. Um, you can, for those calls to action, you can have no calls to action. If you're just sharing tips and information and education, you can have a call to action that says, go listen to the episode. There's so many different ways to do it, but I don't want you to just limit yourself to the call to action to go listen to the episode or go find the audio. You know, you want to kind of give people a little bit of value even outside of listening to that audio episode, because like I said, that is not for everybody. Um, so idea number three is to turn your audio content into a workshop. Or I mean, honestly, in some cases, you could probably turn it into an entire one day, like a, like a retreat or something like that. But turn it into something that's a little bit more interactive. Or if that's not really your speed, you could turn it into maybe a freebie or like an opt-in, right? So here's an example for you. I once did a podcast episode way, way, way back on She Built This about podcast pitching and like how to be a good podcast pitcher, how to be a good podcast guest. And I turned that episode like almost pretty much most of it. I turned it into an opt in on my website. So I had my free podcast pitching guide and people could just go on my website and sign up for it and uh, become join me on my email list. So that's another idea too. Like a lot of the things that you share in audio format, they can also turn into workshops. They can also become freebies or opt-ins. You could maybe share it to YouTube, right? So you're doing video and you're getting more reach in that way. So like, it's just about thinking of like, how can I turn this into something else uh, that reaches people in a different way if they're maybe not just into podcasts or audio? So that's idea one, two, and three. 
<laughs> Any questions? No? Okay, we'll keep moving. No, see, in all seriousness, if you have questions, uh, please email them to me, emily at emilyaborn.com. I think I'm going to have something fun coming soon that lets you kind of like send me questions vocally, but I don't want to uh, say that before I actually have implemented it yet. So it might be coming. We'll see, but I think it's coming. Okay, uh, let's talk about repurposing video content. Same thing as audio. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Like I shared video content, not really my cup of tea, not my bag of chips. Video content could include a Facebook or an Instagram live, maybe something you did by yourself or maybe something you did with a friend. It could be a reel. It could be something that you posted on YouTube or a video talking about your business that lives on your website. I've seen those a lot. Um, it might also be video content like that was like recorded from a workshop that you did. Or maybe it's a video you sent to a client walking them through how to do something. Or maybe it was, like I said, like a reel. Could be short, could be long, could be big, could be small. I've built entire content banks for clients jam-packed full of blogs, social posts, and emails just from videos that they already had living on Facebook or YouTube or in their memberships and courses. So we've done, we've broken those down into blogs, social posts, and emails. In fact, I kid you not, I even wrote an entire book for somebody. I ghost wrote a book for somebody using content that they had in videos. Some of it was in a Facebook group and some of it was uh, videos that we made while I was interviewing her. So here's three ideas on how you could take video content and repurpose it. You could just put these into action like today or tomorrow. Idea number one, turn it into something else like a PDF or a worksheet or I don't know, maybe it's time for you to turn those videos into a book, okay? Or an ebook if you're feeling a little bit less ambitious, but still like, ooh, that could be for me. So number idea number one is to turn it into something written like a PDF, a worksheet, a book, an ebook. Idea number two is to turn that video into a podcast episode. So how would I do that? Well, one idea is in, in the case of a lot of video, you also are able to get that audio file. If you can get that audio file, you can then turn that into a podcast episode. I would recommend working with somebody like Alicia Galati if, if starting a podcast is something that you're at all interested in because I don't really want to be known as the person that teaches you how to start a podcast. I could teach you how to do it wrong. I could teach you how to do it wrong. But you can take your video content. You may need to clean it up a little bit, but take the audio from that video and bada bing, bada boom, you could turn that into a podcast episode. And then number three is turning that video content into an email or into social media posts, like breaking down mini pieces, right? Just like we did with that audio content. Uh, another example, I think in, in the case of video, might also be turning it into a blog or turning it into an article. I mean, those are relatively mini compared to an entire video in, in some cases. So turn it into something written, turn it into a podcast episode, or turn it into uh, mini pieces that you can share in smaller, multiple ways. Those are your three ideas for video. Let's talk about courses, workshops, webinars, and even panels that you're a part of. I was just on a panel recently um, hosted by Jody Gallant of JMG Marketing. Up in, She's up in the Lakes region of New Hampshire. And we got to, as panelists, chime in virtually. And we were sharing about how we use AI in our business. The ethical concerns, the things we bump up against, the things we like about it, the things we don't like about it. It was awesome. So in that panel, she has some fantastic questions. Absolutely fantastic questions. I even wrote Jody back. I was like, these questions are amazing. I can take every single one of those questions that Jody asked me 
And I can use those questions. I could probably turn a lot of those questions into an entire podcast episode. I could turn them into another workshop. I could turn them into social media posts. So the questions I got asked as a panelist, I thought were such a great thing that I could repurpose. Now, in the case of maybe courses or uh, workshops or webinars, chances are there's going to be some storytelling in there. So where can you pull out those stories and share them in other ways? Maybe it is on your podcast. Maybe it is on social media. I don't know. Only you know the answer to this. But where can you find the stories within those courses, those workshops, those webinars, those panels? And then the other thing I love is taking courses, workshops, and webinars and really chunking it down, like really, really making it bite sized. So this is where you might take all of these different things that you cover in a workshop and you can just kind of spread them out. I mean, you could probably get an entire month's worth of social media posts. I've done workshops. I know that I could get at least a month of content if I just broke the workshop down, basically like piece by piece by piece by piece and shared it throughout the month. Um, the other thing you can do with courses, workshops, webinars, and probably in a lot of cases, panels as well, is just like totally turning it into something new, like a podcast, like I use that example, uh, making a blog out of your workshop or your course, um, turning that webinar into a full-blown course that people can you know, take after the webinar, and maybe even turning that into something else creative that you can think of. I don't know, maybe you can think of like an in-day event that is entirely based on the course that you just did. Maybe it's a good in-person event, right? So you're doing the same sort of thing using the same content in a different way. Okay, and then lastly, I did promise you repurposing conversations and client calls. Now, when I say this, I do not want you thinking that I'm like walking around sharing all of the confidential information in my client calls. In fact, I don't think un unless a client gives me overt permission to uh, share their name on social media and say like, hey, I worked on this site for them. I don't say my clients' names and I most definitely don't say what we're working on unless they have given me permission to do so. So... In client calls, though, I get a lot of questions, and a lot of the questions are very similar. So those questions, this probably happens to you too, those questions make fantastic social media content because they're questions that people always ask me, so chances are high, once again, that the questions are burning on other people's minds too. I love doing this especially in, um, I don't call them discovery calls, I just call them connect chats, connect calls, whatever, I don't know, a call, <laughs> they're just calls. But I love doing this in discovery calls because people at that stage, I kind of get to understand maybe what might be holding them back from deciding me. And that's a great place I can pull out content because if it's holding one person back or it's a hesitation or a concern with one person, it, chances are high, it's probably a hesitation or concern with somebody else too. And giving them that answer, that reassurance is super valuable. So that's a place you can find content is the questions that they ask you. There are also probably questions that your colleagues ask you in like conversations or when you're introducing yourself that you also can repurpose into content. So I love thinking about that. Like if there's a question you often get asked, how can you turn that into content? Whether that is a conversation with a colleague or on a client call. Um, the other thing I love taking from calls and also conversations are examples of um, something that somebody is being challenged by or something that you're helping them overcome. I like doing this a lot with my strategy sessions. So I like to give like really tangible examples of what I helped somebody overcome in a strategy session. Again, I don't ever say their names or their business unless they give me over permission and want me to. But for example, somebody came to me recently and she does not need, we, we did her website copy. She doesn't need it all redone. She needs to make a couple of tweaks and she also wants to come up with some other marketing materials that um, the website copy and the marketing materials have the same tone and voice to them. She doesn't need me to write them. She's actually a very good writer and I offered her a strategy session where we're going to sit down and we're going to literally do these things together. 
while we're on the call. She's going to work on them. I'm going to give her feedback as we go. So she'll have a little bit to get started. And then when we meet on the call, we'll really refine it and make it great together. So that's a good example of like, okay, this is a challenge somebody's facing. And how am I helping them overcome this? And you can do the same exact thing. This could be challenges you're facing in your own business and how you're overcoming them. It could be conversations that you're having with your colleagues and things that they're facing and, you know, your thoughts or opinions or ideas on that. Or it could be from your client and your client calls. The other thing I love is uh, speaking to what somebody came to you for. So, you know, a lot of people know that we are, let's say, web designers, but they don't know all of the things that we do. So I think that sometimes it's good to highlight what somebody came to us for and um, how we can help in those different various ways. So you're really just giving examples of like all the different various things that you can do for people. Basically, yes, I can help you with that. Um, And then the last one in conversations and client calls is confusion. And you're like, how do I repurpose confusion? I don't want people to be confused. No, you don't want people to be confused. That's why you clear up the confusion by repurposing any confusion that people do come to you with. So if there's something people come to you and they're like not clear, uh, some people have come to me thinking that, for example, I do branding. And I will say to them, I don't do branding as far as like the visuals and the pretty pictures and, you know, what your logo should look like or your fonts. I do brand messaging. That is simply the, not simply, but that is the words and the tone and the voice of your brand. But I don't do all the little pretty pictures that go along with it. So I know somebody who can do that for you and I will happily refer you, but it's good to clear up that confusion for people. Um, And you can totally like, I could, I mean, I'm repurposing it right here, right? I'm sharing the story and I could also do it as a social media post or pretty much anything else I wanted. So that was a lot. I know I packed a lot into a short amount of time, but I really did want to touch on, you know what I wanted to do for you? I wanted to inspire you to think of your audio, your video, your workshops, your courses, your webinars, your conversations, your client calls. I wanted to inspire you to think of them in a new way and see the opportunities and possibilities within them to be able to repurpose them. So that was really the goal of the episode. I know I talked fast. I know I covered a lot. I know I gave you a lot of ideas. There will be extended show notes in the show notes. So look for that if you want this in kind of like blog form step-by-step, that kind of thing. See, I practice what I teach. I walk the walk. I'm turning this into a blog. All right. On that note, um, if you have any questions or you want to add something or you want to just propose my next topic, feel free to email me, emily at emilyaborn.com. And I hope you'll join me next week. We're going to actually be talking about what is character. We're going to talk about character in a couple of different lights and with a couple of different angles because this podcast, after all, is called the Content with Character podcast. And I've never really explained what character is. And then uh, make sure you stay tuned because the week after that, we're going to actually talk about how to make your client, your customer, the main character. It's like one of my favorite topics, customer experience, customer service, and we're going to get into it. So I will chat with you then. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Content with Character. If you loved the episode, please make sure to subscribe to the podcast, rate, review, and share it with someone else you know it could help. For more content and visibility tips, visit my blog at emilyaborn.com. And be sure to connect with me on Instagram at emilyaborn. I'd love to hear how this inspired you to take action.